So I've already opened up Jump and I'm going to go to File and then New to create a new data table and I'm going to um, copy and paste the data from the Excel file uh, into this file. So I'm going to go ahead and move back to the Excel file. I'm going to select uh, all of the observations including the observation numbers and do control C and then uh, move back to the table and jump and just use control V to paste those numbers in. Now I didn't bring along the uh, labels because um, uh, they wouldn't paste in correctly. So I'm going to go ahead and label these columns uh, and I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording while I do that um, so that when I come back you'll see the columns are all labeled. So I now have labeled all of the columns and let's make a few plots here uh, just to look at what they uh, look like. Uh, so I think the first plot that I'm going to make is a plot of each of these columns against the time order. And so I can go ahead and do that with analyze and fit y by x. And um, I can do this actually by putting in uh, all of those variables that I want to plot against time. I can put them all in as y's and then just time order in as x. And if I click OK, I will get now a, a plot of each one of those variables against time order. So uh, I want to go ahead and make these vertical because I think it's a little better to, to look at them. Uh, and you can see that the plot of the column B random normals, the ones that were used to create the Y's, they're just scattered around zero like they should be. Same with the column C random normals. But now when I look at Y, uh, I get this wavy behavior. Okay, uh, The Y's again are created by summing up those random normals and a similar kind of thing for X. Um, if I make one more plot here that is a plot of the original random numbers, say the column B against column C, what you're going to see is that this picture is just a random scatter of, uh, of normal data. So there it is. Let's make it a little bit bigger so you can uh, take a look at it. Okay, just a random scatter. So there really is no relationship between X and Y. But now I'm going to, uh, to run the regression of the Y random walk on the X. So to do that, I'm going to do analyze and then fit model. And I'm going to put Y in as the Y and X in as the X and I'm going to make it a minimal report. Now X and Y are truly unrelated. X has no predictive power for Y whatsoever. But now I'm going to go ahead and run the regression and let's take a look at what happens. What happens is very surprising and should be very troubling because under the parameter estimates the p-value for the test of whether there's a relationship between X and Y is tiny. And this is saying that there is very strong statistical evidence for a relationship between X and Y. And this, of course, is confirmed by the F-test over here. The problem is we know this is, is entirely garbage. It simply isn't true. Okay, so why is this happening? Well, the answer is it's happening because of correlation in the residuals. And so let's go ahead and look at um, the residual plot. So I'm going to go ahead and and save out the things I need to save out to do the, the uh, residual diagnostics. I'm firstly going to save out the predicted values and then I'm going to come back and then save out the standardized residuals, the studentized residuals. And now I'm going to make a plot of the studentized residuals against the X, the Y hat, and the time order. So analyze fit Y by X the Y in my um, plots here is, are the studentized residuals. I want to plot against the X in the model, the predicted value, and I'm going to plot against the time order. So I'll make those plots and then I'm going to stack them up so that we can take a look at them. So I don't really see too much going on here in the standardized residuals against the X. 
or in the st uh, standardized residuals against the uh, predicted value. It's a little weird that there's a, a kind of two clumps. But where I really see that there's a problem is when I plot the st uh, standardized residuals against the time order. You can see that these residuals are just clearly not independent of each other. This is not a random scatter around zero at all, but rather it is moving in waves. And it's the fact that the error terms in this regression are not independent of each other that is causing the regression to um, appear to be have a significant relationship when in fact there is none.